Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin, and I'm excited to get into a little bit of trouble with Brent Hayfley. We were just having some fun with his name. Um, it's spelled a certain way, which you'll see in the in the title of the episode. Brent is delightful. I'll just go ahead and share that with you right off the top. We've had a, an excellent conversation, and I kind of just want to have like a coffee with him or maybe a beverage at some point. Let me introduce you to Brent. Brent has led in the number one or number two role in multiple businesses and nonprofits on the local, national, and international level. As a consultant and coach, he's walked with hundreds of CEOs and teams all over North America. Today, Brent is the head coach at the executive and team coaching firm, Vibrancy Unlocked. Brent, you are definitely vibrant, and I feel as if you are unlocked or unleashed. I'm just, I'm so, I'm so tickled <laughs> to get to talk to you and get to know you. It's just, I'm already like quite taken with getting to chat oh, with you, and well, I'm excited you. to share you with my audience today. So welcome. <laughs> thank you. It's fun to be here. Great. So. Well, let's dive right in head first, all the way back to the beginning. It was the yeah. best of times. It was the worst of times. I'm kidding. Not all the way back to the beginning. Let's go back to your beginning <laughs> as a coach. How did sure. you... How did you discover or realize or were told that coaching or becoming a coach was really a great expression of who you are and who you wanted to be in the world? How did that happen for you? Sure. Well, actually, uh, I started out as a consultant before the coaching. And so uh, I was in the nonprofit sector working fundraising, coaching, board coaching and doing some or I'm sorry, fundraising, uh, consulting, board consulting and some executive consulting and leadership consulting, working with different teams all over the country. Hmm. And in that process, uh, there were two resources that really resonated with me. One hmm. was Edgar Schein's process consultation revisited. And the other one was Patrick Lencioni's uh, Getting Naked, uh, which is an interesting name to a book. But hmm. both of them talked about a philosophy or an approach where, um, yes, you as a consultant have expertise, wisdom, experience, uh, insights, but so does your client. And so in hmm. contrast to the doctor-patient model where I am the doctor – I will prescribe or I will diagnose, I will prescribe and I will treat. And you will say, yes, doctor. <laughs> um, I took on the consulting approach of, all right, we're going to get in the trench together and I'm going to bring what I can bring and you're going to bring what you can bring. And together we're going to meet in the middle. And so I have only been professionally coaching for three years, but I've been consulting the, my approach to consulting has been a coach approach to consulting for 15. And mm -hmm. so I feel like I am a more mature coach than I normally would, than, than a lot of people would be if they've only been mm -hmm. coaching for three years, if that makes any sense. So it was sense. when, it was when I, um, uh, it was when I started taking, uh, getting excited about Clifton strengths mm -hmm. that I realized, wait a second, there's this methodology called coaching. This sounds really familiar. This this feels really good. And I can do coaching and have a similar impact to consulting and I don't have to write a report. <laughs> that sounds like my type of deal. So that's how I got into it, Kevin. <laughs> you mean I can, I can skip the book report and still get the grade? <laughs> exactly. It was it was beautiful. Like this this is awesome. So <laughs> it's it's been a good fit. So I love the way you describe that. It's because I, I feel like it goes this way, especially when you're able to look back at it in retrospect, because you have the, you know, the 2020 vision looking back, how you could see your, you as a coach evolving out of who you were trying to be in the world as a consultant. A lot of people come from like places like HR, or they'll come from various you know, positions of leadership, or they were in corporate and they moved to entrepreneurial, all sorts of different journeys. But there's that that slowly dawning realization or, and this is from the perspective of hindsight being 2020, when you look back and you're like, I was really becoming a coach for over a decade before I actually mm -hmm. officially quote unquote, started calling yep. myself that. Yep. It's just it's so fascinating to hear the way you describe it. It's, it, I, it, it, it strikes me as a dawning where it's just like the sun's coming up slowly, the light's getting brighter. And before you know it, it's up there in the sky. <laughs> yep, exactly. And, and I just, I again have to, to just give credit, especially to Edgar Schein and all of his, you know, he's got a book called Helping and a um, and a mm. humble leadership and and some books that just really resonated with the concept of yes, you have something to bring, but so do they, mm. and and when you go into any relationship with that, 
versus uh, I'm superior, you're inferior, it, it, it brings for some really exciting conversations and uh, powerful insights. Yeah, one-way traffic feels it has a certain kind of appeal because and, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of projecting a little bit perhaps um, as I'm want to do from time to time, but project that one way traffic feels a little easier to control, feels a little bit easier to understand. And so in certain ways, there's something, there's something that feels contained about it. Whereas the two way traffic, the collaboration can at least to some, at least at first feel a little more chaotic or a little out of control. However, my experience is that the coaching relationship it really it really does quickly become again if you're if you have a good fit if you're in alignment the coach and the coachee um there's really like a one plus one equals three element to it where you're bringing really all of all of what you have to the table together and each of you bringing your strengths and understanding um to basically making the absolute best possible movements forward and it's i feel it's it's taken it didn't take me very long once i committed to seeing things that way to realize that that was just in, in my opinion, a superior way to go about having an impact on someone. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I kind of like clipped that off very tightly. I was like, I didn't really leave an open loop there, did I? <laughs> That's okay. It's all good. I like it. So, well, let's talk. Let's talk about the present. Let's talk about the the nuts and bolts of your business today. And I try usually try to uh, ask this question as a two parter because I feel like it gets at the heart of mm -hmm. what someone's doing as a coach. Who do you coach? And how do you coach them? The who being sure. if you have any particular industries that you tend to focus on with your client base mm -hmm. or any particular like level or degree of, of sure. career development that you focus on and the how being all the ways that people coach, one-to-one, -one, group, keynote speech, book, sure. all of the above, yada, yada. Sure. So yeah, who do you coach and how do you coach them these days? So I love working with mid-level and senior level leaders <laughs> and whether it be nonprofit uh, for-profit or even government contacts. So uh, leaders who are working with teams, especially, and I will work either individually with ex with those executives or I will work with the executive and their team. Hmm. And, and so sometimes I start with the team and then move to the executive. And sometimes I start with the executive and move to the team. But either way, I love that context, especially when you're working with the C-suite type leader and helping them think through how do I be a leader that um, that is healthy, not only for me, but for my team? Mm -hmm. And and I call that vibrancy. Hmm. So I like, you, I like you asked now. the question about how yeah, uh, yeah. A, a core part of, of, of my philosophy and my approach is uh, I'm not sure about you, Kevin, and, and your experiences, but I have yet to find a leader who is... Um, successful at completely divorcing personal from professional mm -hmm. and, and, um, but yet there's this, this ethos within a lot of work environments that, well, you're at work, you should separate that, you know, you suck it up, buttercup. You gotta get, you gotta get going. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta go do your thing. And, um, and so I really have been passionate about creating a space where it is okay to say, my marriage is failing and it's affecting my work mm -hmm. or I'm struggling with this aspect or I'm dealing with this thing. And, um, or, you know, I'm really good at my job. I just don't like what I do hmm. and, and helping leaders, or I have, I want to grow, but my team doesn't want to follow me. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Well, let's, hmm. let's figure out why. And, and often there is both a professional reason they don't want to follow, but there's also a personal reason they don't want to follow. And so, um, I, I, I love those conversations where it's like, all right, so let's just, let's just sit, let's just be together. Let's process through this and, um, and help you become a far more vibrant person in both your professional and your personal life. I really do love love your choice of the word vibrancy because of the way that for me, like when I when I hear when I hear and when I speak the word vibrancy, I don't just think about I well, other words come to mind, just kind of like stretching it out like resonance. Mm -hmm. Like I can almost feel like a a, a literal vibration and the way that yep. those vibrations when like, you know, like you hit a tuning fork and it will radiate out or you, mm -hmm. you plunk a plunk a pebble in a pond. And you see the concentric circles radiating out and thinking about the vibrancy of leadership and the way that what's happening in your life, personal, professional, whatever mm -hmm. other compartments you'd like to put things in, it's all of a piece and it's 
all having an effect on the people that you're leading because you have a relationship with them. And people who are in a relationship with you of any kind are going to feel what you're feeling and experience what you're experiencing in different ways. It's going to pass between you based on the the way that you lead, your leadership style, the way that you show up. And it's 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 always funny how, and that's because this is always this is a lifelong struggle, really, that desire to compartmentalize while yep. not also just dividing myself into little pieces. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> it's like realizing that everything is like of a piece, yep. but also yep. trying to like make things, take, take things in, what's the word? Consumable chunks, so to speak. Sure. <laughs> and, and right there, what you just said, Kevin, is a big part of why I am passionate about vibrancy and why I'm passionate about working specifically with leaders and their teams. Because um, number one, I, when you work with a leader and you help a leader succeed, you're not just helping the leader. Mm -hmm. You're helping that leader's family. You're helping that leader's community. You're helping that leader's team. You're helping that leader's organization. And, and, um, and, and for me, impact is just really important. And so the ability to be able to work and, and not just touch one life by working with one life, but touch multiple lives by working with one life is so exciting and fun. And when that, you know, that, that, that moment of insight, that Eureka moment comes, it's just, it, it it's just so exciting and giddy. I've also though, I'm, I'm, I'm a goofy guy. I, I, <laughs> um, I've, I don't mind playing practical jokes. I like to, uh, I like to laugh a lot. I like to play. And that hasn't always been welcome in the work environments that that mm-hmm. I've been in. And so I have felt that that feeling of, okay, we like what you do and how you make us money, but mm-hmm. we don't really like you. And and that has held me from um that has held me back or prevented me from living my fullest. And living the best that I can. And I know that there are so many other leaders because I've worked with over 150 organizations as a consultant uh, and and many more just in the sales process. There are so many other leaders that are feeling the same thing, Mm -hmm. that are experiencing that same thing or their team members are experiencing that same thing and changing the culture, adjusting the culture so that it is inclusiveness is a big word right now but it's 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 not just about um you know federally protected classes inclusiveness mm-hmm. also means allowing people to be who they are mm-hmm. and 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 celebrating that and and at the same time creating a space where they can be productive healthy and have great relationships as a fellow, a fellow goofy person myself. Um, I often find myself using the terms goofy and silly um, to describe myself because it's what comes through. And it's, it's, it's an outgrowth of my passion and my enthusiasm. Mm-hmm. And the way I often understand it myself and also try to communicate it to the world around me and to the people that I lead and the people I have relationships with and the people who lead me is that I try to be lighthearted and serious minded. Correct. And that I try to always keep a lightness to way that the way that I move through the world. And that sometimes includes humor or mm-hmm. a breezy conversation or even entertaining small talk, or let's see, you know, let's talk about, you know, last night's episode of succession or whatever it happens to be, whatever happens to be the thing to, to keep me lighthearted and just be sharing myself with ease and facility. And also in a way that allows me to, allows people to connect with me and me sure. to connect with them yep. and also be there to do the work and to mm-hmm. be successful and have an impact. And I think Far too often people think of those states of being as very separated. And again, that compartmentalization you spoke to earlier between the personal and professional. And I think a light heart and a serious mind belong together because we're all trying to have, you know, impact on the world. We're trying to, you know, pursue our passions and also make the world a better place. Most of us are, I should say, I shouldn't speak for everyone, but I know you and I are. And the people that we usually choose to work with are committed to being better developing themselves personally and professionally and having a positive impact on the world and their world, which means their, you know, their team, whether they lead or whether they follow or both. It, it really is a matter of when you create that space for people to be a whole person. And, and again, I, I'm, I, I don't, I'm not a life coach. I don't want to work with just the life side. 
I want to work on the, on the leadership side. I like working with small business leaders. I like working with, you know, medium size and even large organizations. I've, I've worked with a wide range of organizations. Um, I love that diversity in that, that, that of, of clients that I work with, mm-hmm. but, um, but when you create that space for the whole person, that's where, uh, that's where you have the ability to unlock a person's fullest potential. And, and when you do that, especially when you unlock a person's fullest potential as a team, real traction happens then. That's where the biggest productivity happens. And I, I'm a Clifton Strengths coach and and I know that, you know, when you when you leverage this is based in science, it's not just based in in you know Brent's theory of life, although um I agree with it. <laughs> when you have a team that celebrates its strengths they're 8.9% more profitable and 7.8% more likely to be productive. Hmm. And they are th- six times more likely to be engaged and employee engagement is a big issue right now. And mm-hmm. so if we can find ways for teams and leaders to be more vibrant in the way that they live, uh, to have fun. I, I was at a, in an organization recently and I just asked a couple of the people, I said, when's the last time you had a, you've had fun as a team? And they're like, um, I think we went out for coffee, like right before Christmas break. And I'm thinking, Hmm, wonder how this culture is. Mm-hmm. This Actually, I don't, I, can't, I figured, you know, exactly. <laughs> you can tell. There's no wonder the staff feel tired. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you really do. I mean, it's 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 very easy to underestimate the amount of uh, the word came to me naturally the amount of vibrancy and energy mm-hmm. and life you get yep. from your team from from yep. the people that you work with on a, a daily weekly monthly yearly basis however that goes it's just it's amazing and it it doesn't have to be some sort of you know multifaceted complex emotional relationship just having like a, a healthy human relationship with the people that you mm-hmm. know at work i mean you can call them yep. work friends if you want i can yep. drop the work off the front of it it's like we largely relate to each other in the context of work and yet we are human beings who enjoy each other's company and like the work that we do together not super complicated exactly. <laughs> doesn't have to be anyway we exactly. like we might like to make it so but it doesn't have to be complicated and it can be vibrant which is not a word you hear from a lot of people talking about their teams vibrant or in the work world more yeah yeah well i couldn't agree more <laughs> <laughs> clearly clearly <laughs> let's I'm unlock some quiet. vibrancy kevin <laughs> <laughs> well i have i've just i i feel like i could talk to you for quite a long time and also i think we have like, like i said i wasn't just blowing smoke i think I feel like we have a similar vibe in the way that we like to move mm-hmm. through the world and i feel like we could have a lot of fun together and get up to a lot of trouble so this is this has been really fun and I do want to, I'm looking up at the zoom clock and doing my best to be a responsible podcast host. So before I let you go, which sure. I will, I promise, yep. where can people find out more about you, who you are, what you do, vibrancy unlocked, et cetera, et sure. cetera. And where can people best connect with you if they want to start a conversation, start a relationship? Sure. So, uh, the first place to go is vibrancyunlocked.com. It's as simple as that. And uh, it's a website, just like any other website. But one resource that I do want to highlight is I have what what I call the Life Work Vibrancy Scale. And there's just Mm -hmm. a big button at the top that says Take Assessment. And it is a no-cost assessment. You just download it. And I won't even see the results unless you want me to see the results. Happy to. (laughs) But it's 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 a complimentary assessment that you can fill out yourself and look at. It has seven life factors and seven work factors. And you simply rate those factors on the scale of worst possible to best possible. So where are you in your physical health or where are you in your fun and leisure or your friend relationships or your relationship with your team? And so you answer those questions and it's, it's a tool that allows you to think more critically about the vibrancy in your life. And then from that, there's four question categories or question areas that you can go deeper in. And it's just a tool that's available. And if you want to go further and talk more, you can then take that and reach out with me and we can we can start from there. And all that information is at vibrancyunlock.com. I also invite anyone who wants to to uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. So that's huh. another great place. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, I'm, I'm finding LinkedIn to be a more and more valuable platform. And less less toxic than other social media platforms. Correct. I won't say untoxic, but certainly yeah. less 
<laughs> a little more provided that all like... the all the uh provided that you don't get spammed uh there's a lot of spam <laughs> recently that's been coming through yes yes it's there's there's definitely some filters that need to be worked on both yep. for how i interact with the platform and with how the platform kind of traffic precisely but i i love there. linkedin it's a great place to be and and uh it's allowed me a lot of really cool connections with people so yes. and also one Pledges more thing yourself I, I want to oh yeah of course that's how we met um <laughs> it's true it's how we met <laughs> fancy meeting you here um, I wanted to, I, I guess, compliment you again on something in particular. The uh, the emphasis you put on on data in the context of coaching and how a lot I think a lot of times again people will compartmentalize or fail to realize the unity of um, the sort of what you might might call the softer skills. I, mm -hmm. I hate using that term because it's not what they are. Um, but just like the sort of the conversations, the development, yep. the holding space, and and that, but there's also like there are ways to turn that into data and there's ways for that data to inform the next kind of conversations you have or the next things that you do and it's not either or it's both and and i feel like that approach is really the only way to holistically go about coaching and go about developing yourself your team your company your life correct there is a lot of science mm -hmm. behind uh the 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 field of coaching and uh, I do coaching from using Clifton Strengths. I use uh, a number of other modalities in in my practice, and um, but predominantly I, I have a, a strong Clifton Strengths focus. And there's a there's a lot of um, I use a lot of neuroscience in my practice as well. Um, mm. And so um, there's there's uh, there's some things that just are scientifically valid. And when you have the ability to walk through something, to take personal ownership over it, to, um, to celebrate who you are, to recognize, um, I, I don't know if you know this detail, Kevin, um, mm -hmm. but, um, in any given moment when we're conscious, we, our brain is taking in 2 million bits of information, 2 million bits. Everything from colors. I mean, you think about how many pixels are on a screen. Um, you know, what are you seeing? What are you feeling? What are you smelling? Um, what are you hearing? What are you touching? Uh, and your brain is constantly uh, looking through all of those things to say, what do I pay attention to? Mm -hmm. And what a coach can do is say, all right, from those 2 million bits in any second that you're engaging, where should we really be focusing? And when we focus the client on that, they can be a lot more effective and successful in whatever they're looking at. And that's just, and that's, that's not my opinion. That's just the science of coaching. Yep. And that's, I think that's the perfect note to leave this on. That's just, it's not my opinion. That's just the facts. <laughs> <laughs> Deal with it. <laughs> Deal with it. Brent, it's, it, I have, again, I, I'm throwing this word around and I can't, I can't help it because it just keeps coming to mind. It has been a delight to get to talk with you and to get to know you Thank a little you. bit over the last 30 minutes or so. It's just, I, I feel like I could talk to you for hours. I, I love just getting a chat with you. I feel like we could talk all sorts of serious and lighthearted mm -hmm. subjects. So thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing some time with me. I'm totally going to slide into your LinkedIn DMs with not no spam and just try to have you back on in a few <laughs> months, maybe so we can continue the conversation. So just, yeah, thanks for being here today. It was great it's to get to know good. you. Yeah. Thank you. And to the audience, I, I hope you had half as good of a time as I did, because if you did, you're going to go down to the show notes. You're going to go to vibrancyunlock.com. I'm actually going to go ahead and take that assessment. When you were describing it, I'm like, I need to make some time to do that later today. So I think I'm going to do that myself. And I invite my audience to do the same. And we will talk to you here very soon.